The, the sermon text for today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 27 through 33. And the sermon title is, Jesus Defeats Attack, Questioning His Authority. Mark 11, 27. Now we just finished the previous passage where Jesus talks about the fig tree that was withered and about prayer and about forgiveness and they were coming to Jerusalem after he gave that brief teaching on prayer because they were coming from Bethany Verse 27, and they came again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking in the temple, there came to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And they say to him, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered and said to them, I will also ask of you one question and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of men, they feared the people. For all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said to Jesus, We cannot tell. And Jesus answering said to them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. To, to refresh your memory as regards the timeline that we're looking at, This is still Tuesday, in the last week of Jesus' life on earth. On Sunday was the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, after which he returned, he visited the temple and returned to Bethany. Monday was the cursing of the fig tree and cleansing the temple and leaving the city again. Tuesday, we're still on Tuesday now. The conversation between Peter and Jesus, the fig tree, and now we have the confrontation between Jesus and his enemies. Tuesday, a lot of things happen, and a lot of things are, are recounted in, in chapter 13, chapter 12 and 13, all, all Tuesday. <coughs> Wednesday, we don't have anything specific said. Thursday, which is in the month Nisan, 
of the old Jewish calendar on the 14th day, which according to our time would be on Thursday, Jesus is taken into custody. Now you understand, I want you to get clear the timeline. This is high drama in the life of Christ. And you see how he conducts himself and how calm he is and, and full of strength. The Spirit was given to him without measure. He walks in the power of the Spirit. On Friday, he will undergo a trial early in the morning and later in the day on Friday, he is crucified and put to death. So, this is Tuesday. In a few days, he will suffer greatly and die. This is our King. This is our Lord. And he's now been confronted by the priests, the scribes, and the rulers of the temple and of the, the people of Israel sent by the Sanhedrin, which is the, the governing body of Israel's religious life, to question his authority, to set a trap for him. And it really is a very clever trap. And they don't see how he can avoid it. But they have tried this many times to trap him with questions, and he's always overcome them, overpowered the questions. So, this is the trap. They ask him two questions. By what authority do you do these things? Referring to his teaching, his cleansing the temple, overturning the tables of the money changers, getting all the animals and their filth out of the temple. They're thinking of that and his teachings. And the second question is, who gave you this authority to do these things? Now, had he any credentials or authorization to warrant the things that he did and said. If he admitted that he did not, he might lose the respect of the people because the, the authority had to come from the law, from the law of God, from the word of God. And if he could not prove his authority, what we would call credentials nowadays, people might say, well, he's a good man, but maybe we were mistaken. Or, on the other hand, if he said he just simply took it on himself to do and say the things that he did, they could charge him with blasphemy. Because who is he to come into the temple of God and disrupt it, even though it was a filthy, avarish scene, money-making scene, if he didn't have authority, he had no right to do those things. So, as regard his authority, let me, let me bring you to some scriptures here. In John chapter 14, 10, verses 10 and 11, he says, Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. Verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. 
His works, His miracles, raising the dead, healing the blind, calming the sea. Many mighty miracles He did. And in John 10, verse 25, He says, I told you, and you did not believe, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. The works done in his Father's name, they bear witness of him. Now, in John chapter 1, from verses 19 through 34, the the priests and the, uh, the Levites from Jerusalem asked John the Baptist, Who are you? And he confessed. I'm in, in the Gospel of John 1, verse 19 and 20. And denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you that prophet? referring to the prophet spoken of in Deuteronomy 18, which is the Messiah. And he answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What do you say of yourself? He said, I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said to him, Why do you baptize then if you are not Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. But there stands one among you whom you do not know. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Betharaba, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Verse 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I am come baptizing with water. And John bore record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it lighted upon him. And I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said to me, Upon whom you shall see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I saw and bore record that this is the Son of God. This is the testimony of John to the official delegation that came to question him. But Jesus does not need the baptism of John or the baptism of any man in John 5:34 Jesus says I receive not testimony from man but these things I say that you might be saved well remember that verse he is saying these things that people might be saved because of the testimony of John the Baptist. He will use what we will see now in this confrontation with a hostile delegation from the rulers of Israel and the chief priests who really are out, one, to discredit him, and second, to destroy him, 
to charge him with blasphemy and to kill him. He uses in this trap that they have set for him, even though he does not need the testimony of man, he uses the prophetic God-given witness of John who the people knew was a true prophet to crush the attempt to discredit him. Jesus' wisdom cannot be surpassed. We can see that Jesus has a greater testimony to his authority than John, the Father, and his works. So now I'm going to read from John chapter 5, verses 17 through 40, where Jesus gives a full accounting of his authority to do these things. John 5, 17 through 40. He's talking here now when he is confronted by other Jews that were looking to kill him at another time. But Jesus answered them, the hostile Jews, my father works until now or always, my father works and I work. Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him because not only he had broken the Sabbath, so they said, but also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said to them, truly, solemnly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the fathers do, but what he sees the father do. For what things soever he does, those also the son does likewise. For the father loves the son and shows him all things that himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the father raises up the dead and quickens them, even so, the Son quickens whom he will. For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son, honors not the Father which sent him. Truly, solemnly I say to you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life. And he shall not come into condemnation, but is fat, passed from death to life. Truly, solemnly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. For as the Father has life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Now, there's a lot of nuanced material here, the Son of God, the Son of Man, two of his titles. Jesus is the eternal Son of God, and he is the Son of Man, meaning he's a true human, the mediator, the Messiah, between God and man, to give his human nature as a sacrifice for our sins. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, verse 28, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. 
they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation this is the day of the judgment Jesus will have all the dead arise the righteous and the wicked and stand before him the earth will have fled from his presence and we will be standing upheld before him all humankind the sheep and the goats to heaven and to hell at his voice they will all come we will see this with our eyes we will be there ourselves we will see this may every one of you here be among the sheep Verse 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. That is, is not by you, my hostile opponents. It is not considered true by you, there is another that bears witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. You sent unto John, and he bore witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man. These things I say that you might be saved. He was a burning and shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father has given me to do, I finish. The same works that I do bear witness of me, and the Father that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself, which has sent me, has borne witness of me. The Father himself, who sent Jesus, bore witness of him. When did he do that? He do that, he did that at the Mount of Transfiguration when Peter, James, and John were on the Mount and Moses and Elijah came and Peter was talking, not knowing what he was saying, and the Father said, spoke to them, hear him, this is my beloved son. And also, when Jesus was baptized by John, a voice came from heaven after the baptism and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom, I'm, in whom I am well pleased. Now, it is said in the scripture by Jesus, which we'll get to in a moment. <clears throat> the Father himself, which has sent me, has borne witness of me. This is in verse 37, John 5. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Now, He's talking to his opponents who were of the devil, who did not believe in him. It's to them who did not hear his voice. They could not receive it, and they did not see his shape. What's the shape of God? What, what did the Lord say to Philip when he said, Lord, Show us the Father, and we will believe. And Jesus said, have you been with me so long, and you, do not, you not, have not known me? He that has seen me has seen the Father. He is the express image of the Father. Now, the Father doesn't have a body, but God the Son, the Messiah, the Christ, has a human body, like we do. A human nature 
just like ours. These opponents did not recognize when God spoke through the Messiah to them. They were not of God. Verse 38, And you have not his word abiding in you, for whom he has sent you do not believe. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me, that you may have life. This is the word of God. Now, Jesus, back in, in Mark, chapter 11, Jesus uses the testimony of John even though he doesn't need it to validate his authority, we have seen he has authority, the Father has borne witness, and the mighty miracles have borne witness as to who he is, that he is God manifest in the flesh, as alive as we are, some 2,000 years ago, walking the same earth that we walk just a short ways from here, in the land of Israel. <clears throat> Jesus said to them, I will ask of you one question as regards my authority. Because they said, who gave it to you? And where did you get it from? And Jesus says, the baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? This was a, a rabbinic uh, method, rabbinic style. They would be talking among themselves and they would answer a question with a counter question. And this was accepted rabbinic dialogue and exchange. And you see the wisdom of the Lord, and we're going to see more of this, Lord willing, the next time we, we are in Mark, because, uh, not the next time, but maybe a few times, uh, his, his remarkable wisdom in, in how he answers Nobody can trip him up. He is the Almighty. He has immeasurable wisdom. The baptism of John. Was it of heaven or of men? Answer me. If you answer me, then I will answer you. And the Jews reasoned among themselves and said, if we shall say from heaven, he will say, why then didn't you believe him? And if we shall say of men, they feared the people. For all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered, they lied. They were afraid to, to say what they knew was the truth. We cannot tell. And Jesus answering said to them, neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. He escaped their trap. They tried to trap him and were unable to do that. Applying this matter of authority to ourselves and our lives, I'm gonna close with a few remarks and, and points. This matter of authority to ourselves and our lives in the churches that we are in. J.C. Ryle, a, a godly Englishman, 
who has uh, been a commentator and a, 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 a preacher, Christians must beware of depending too much on ordained men. Don't believe everyone that wears a, a white collar, whether they're an Anglican or a Catholic or a, a Protestant. Pastor Victor wears a white collar sometimes. Um, he's, he's definitely a Protestant. He's Reformed, as I. Um, because there are many in the pulpit who are scoundrels, who are apostates, who are false teachers. Was it not the, the, the very priests and scholars and rulers of the people in whom was not the love of God nor his spirit, was it not these who did not recognize or love him, Jesus, but on the contrary envied and hated him? These kind of preachers should be followed only in as much as they follow the scriptures and no further. There is only one true shepherd and bishop, ultimate bishop of our souls. Peter says this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25. He is the great shepherd and bishop of our souls. Bishop comes from the Greek word episkopos. It means overseer. It means a minister or a pastor, one who oversees the congregation, who oversees their care, their well-being. Not to be a boss with a whip in his hand, a brother who has been appointed to care for the flock. One, one of you. That's what I am. I'm one of you all. That's what a bishop is, an overseer. One who overse and it's a, a biblical name for a pastor. We must learn to always lean more upon Christ in whom is no weakness or failure or error. Always carefully consider and discern those who pastor, testing them by the word of God. Value those who are sound and genuinely care for your souls. Some maybe 15 years ago, I was here preaching right where I am now, and I I made a mistake in one of the things that I said. I gave the wrong name to one of the biblical characters and a, a man was sitting in the front row here, uh, Julius the Hungarian from Budapest. Um, I see him start looking through his Bible. I said, uh oh, I, I guess I made a mistake there. So I, I thought what I said. I said, yeah, that's right. I made a mistake. Julius, I know you were gonna correct me. Um, don't be afraid to do that. Uh, you can say, Pastor, I'm afraid you made a mistake there. We're accountable to the Word of God. You should always assess, I'm not gonna be here forever. You guys are young, I'm old. I'm gonna go to my Lord sooner rather than later. There'll be others that will take my place, whether it's here or another church. Judge them, test them by the word of God. There's safety in that. A physician is useless if he cannot cure diseases. A soldier is useless if he cannot fight. A pastor is useless if he cannot love and care for the congregation and teach the truth as it is in the Bible. Remember these things. Just because somebody's in the pulpit does not compel you to 
to believe them unless you have discerned for yourself that he's sound, that he's godly, that he cares for you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, thank you that we have this record of how you conducted yourself on the earth. That, that you were never defeated by your opponents. You always mastered the conversation and the teaching. And Lord, even your, your death was not a defeat. Lord, as high priest, you gave yourself an atoning sacrifice. Your human, your human body, Lord, you gave as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And we're raised again from the dead that we might live with you. How great thou art. We look forward to laying eyes upon you in person. In your name, Jesus, we give thanks. Amen.